When we come together in the assembly to worship God, we sing many beautiful songs, and many of these songs have things in common. Songs such as An Empty Mansion, which was written in 1937, Beyond the Sunset, which was written in 1936, Heaven Holds All to Me, which was written in 1932, Never Grow Old, which was written in 1930, Oh Yes, I'll Live in Glory, written in 1936, In Heaven They're Singing a Wonderful Song, written in 1937, No Tears in Heaven, written in 1935, Paradise Valley, written in 1935, This World is Not My Home, written in 1937, and Won't It Be Wonderful There, written in 1930. Friends, first it's easy to see that these songs are all about heaven. They express the deepest longing, anticipation, and hope of the Christian heart. But second, and the reason that I shared with you the years that these songs were written, they were all written in about the same time period, in the years 1929 to 1939. These beautiful songs of heaven were all written during the Great Depression. We probably all have seen those black and white photos of mothers wearing threadbare dresses, children in rags, hunger etched in the bones of their faces. This was a time when the nation suffered economic collapse. Businesses were boarded up, millions of workers were laid off when hunger and destitution ravaged the land. And in those desperate times, which some of you listening to this program today may have lived through, but during those times, it seems that people turn their thoughts to a better place, a better time. They set their thoughts and their hopes on heaven. Heaven is a place of permanence and hope and plenty. And can you see them in your mind's eye, singing in their simple church buildings with their eyes closed, singing of their homesickness for heaven? Interestingly, we hear far fewer songs written these days about heaven. It's because we feel more secure economically. We like it here. We're satisfied here. We have it so good in the present that we really don't long for heaven as we once did. We should probably not put such stock in the current good economic times, for experience and scripture tell us how faulty such a premise can be. The greatest missionary who ever lived, a man by the name of the Apostle Paul, said that to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain, Philippians 1:21. And the writer of Revelation could exult in a place where there were no tears and the Lord was the light, where there was no hurtful, mean, or violent people that would be present, and where the sweetest people who ever lived would sing in their praise to God, Revelation 21, 1 through 10. Friends, today we are facing difficult times as well, difficult times throughout the world, not only in our nation, brought on by many different things. And in this time of present distress, I suppose it's easier to remember that this world is really not our home. And when times are good, it's harder to draw that distinction. But yet, our hearts should always be longing for heaven. Because, friends, regardless of how good this life may be, how blessed we may seem to be, the things that God has in store for us and that place that Jesus has gone to prepare will far overshadow anything that we have in this life. The glories of heaven are beyond our imagination. That's a place that we long for. We are homesick for that place. We yearn to be there. Friends, we thank you for joining us today. We pray that you will consider these things that we've discussed and have a blessed day.